What were you saying about drugs, girl? Just that one thing brought it up. Actually, do you know, just one thing. Uh, obviously, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but Brocco talked about that Wolverine protocol and the injury rehab, and we did a rehab video with him. I didn't use the stuff, just to make that clear. If I had used it, I would have mentioned this, but yes. I didn't need to. Um, there was a good case for that as well. It's uh, If it's a functional issue, and Rocco mentioned that, you're wasting your time. So it's like having bad tracking in your car, taking drugs to fix it or replacing those tires, but not getting your car tracked, you're just going to get injured again. And of course, you never want to be taking any kind of drugs. So, blase, so belligerently, you know, so that kind of stuff. So, um, I know people who have used BPC to very good effect. And if I was ever in a situation where uh, something was really fucked, I would definitely, if I could be sure it was actually BPC, I would definitely use it for sure. If there was something like, if I had a really bad tendinopathy or tendinosis, yeah. for sure. Absolutely, yeah. From what I've seen with people, you know? Yeah. Obviously, that's all personal choice for everyone. Back to the main business. So today, today is a Tuesday, and there's three training pieces to be done this evening. So we're going to the track now. It's like five o'clock, quarter past five. Going to the track, three 800 meters to do. Then we have a big squat session. So this is the last of the kind of higher rep squat sessions. Uh, a set of five at 180 kilos. And then a 3K to do after that. So you'll be coming along for the whole lot. As always, the running and stuff is a fucking disaster for recording, but I'm sure we'll talk about it anyway. So that's the track session done. This is usually fully or this is my usual chill out position after after training uh usually just put the seat back and chill out for like 20 minutes 15 minutes maybe uh try and get the cramping in my back and my calves to to subside before driving home it's around quarter to seven now so i'll go home eat some dinner uh, i won't eat a huge amount of dinner just probably some some steak or some chicken uh, probably not any carbs or anything then I'm going to go and squat once I've finished squatting then uh, I'll have some more food so I'll have like the second half of dinner um, and then the last thing before I go to sleep tonight uh, I'll do a, a quick 3k just in a loop around home nice and slow so the pace for that run was quite good yet again a running team on the track so it wasn't ideal it's in the outside lane um, the outside lane I actually prefer it because it feels like the turns aren't so quite or aren't quite as tight. Um, pace was quite good. So 800 metres, six minute mile pace. Felt quite easy. Uh, I think two days in a row on the track is a bit much. I might just go every second day from now on. I'll probably get the same amount of track sessions in every week. Get kind of four sessions in at least uh, and try and limit the amount of uh, kind of track days where I'm doing track day day one and track day day two and track day day three i think every second day would be a bit better for that in terms of just maintaining positions the main kind of breakdown that's happening with my positions it's sorry, sorry the two main breakdowns uh firstly is just in my posture i'll tend to like overextend and be too upright so that's something i've been working on a lot um i've been working on it since since working with rocco in the uk and then so just trying to stay a bit more forward, not overextending. And it really helps with the, the cramping in my lower back because um, my lumbar is in kind of excessive uh, extension when I'm too upright. And then the second thing is just my ankles and calves. Uh, so those of you who will have followed along last year will realize that the kind of shin splints issues and th those things of my, that left tibia. Uh, so just try to stay nice and uh and rigid with the ankles making sure i'm not heel striking something i've gotten much much better at uh, but i'm having to work on it the whole time so today i had a bit of swelling um kind of like pre-plantar fasciitis swelling on the underneath of my foot so just uh foot into a, a bin of ice helped with that and then just some kt tape for the session itself but all that will be will be absolutely a-okay
I either have a cramp in my left lat or my kidneys are failing. Either way, we should probably just get the squats done. Camera's probably just gonna stay running for most of the time today, and um, you'll get an idea. These squat sessions, like building up to a heavy five, when it's like your third time training today, if you include doing a small bit of running this morning before work, you really don't wanna be spending long in sessions. Um, like comprehensively warming up would be very important if it was something like a snatch or a clean or something like that for me, for the back squats no like extra range of motion work is really needed um literally just build up do the weights do the the same reps you want at each of those weights and we should be good to go a uh, question i get a fair bit about the squats particularly in the last few weeks is just in regards like wearing the belt and wearing knee sleeves and when to kind of start wearing them at what point in terms of like your relative percentage or even what point in your um in each session you know for me it's very important in the last like four or five weeks which we're in now that the squats feel very very good from the start i'd prefer to put my knee sleeves on at 120 and go from there rather than put them on at an empty bar and go and then go 70 and then 120 without them but like once you start sweating a small bit once some blood goes into my calves it's impossible to get the knee sleeves on so i just go from the warm up with the knee sleeves um, or from the empty bar with the knee sleeves and then i put my belt on around 120 just to make sure all the squats feel good the last thing i want is for like the third rep on 120 to be like oh that didn't feel great and then have to go 60 kilos heavier for some reps Another sort of aspect um, of these sessions, when it's multiple sessions in a day, uh, trying to like limit overall nervous system fatigue, limit overall fatigue, or not limit training volume, because obviously that's the aim, but limit kind of excessive volume. One thing I like to do is just not have a mass amount of time in between sets. I try and stay pretty warm. Most of the time, if I'm wearing a heart rate monitor, I like my heart rate to come back down around 110. Um, that will obviously be different for everyone uh, with, with your own heart rate max but for me between 110 and 120 is is pretty good uh, if it was a competition I'd like it to be a small bit lower and then get a bit hyped and and get it brought up uh, through non-exercise means just before my attempt but right now just once I feel my heart rate dropping back down I don't my watch on now um, but I usually have a chest strap on and then I can check it on the watch remotely uh, but yeah room 110 or 120 tends to work pretty good for me Okay, so we're 12 minutes in. It's 12 minutes into the session. This is the top set for today. And um, yeah, five reps.
that's the end of this session. Um, we're at about 17 or 18 minutes now since the since the start, since the empty bar basically. That'll kind of give you an idea for for what the the overall pacing of the sessions is. I know a few months ago when I was starting this and I was in more of a prep phase and we did a workout here late one evening and videoed it. Um we got a lot of questions about I think I put a 40 minute time run or 50 minute time run. I'll link that video below. And there are some plyometrics in it. Some power cleans, I think, and some squats. And people were just asking about those faster tempoed sessions. This is the kind of tempo of the squat sessions right now, you know. Minimal wasted energy across the session. And you'll see today, in terms of like the other, like getting hyped or whatever. I know I talked in the last training vlog about monitoring that and monitoring that, that level of hype brought to a session. Um, obviously there's only kind of two squat sessions a week now or one every four or five days uh, maybe less actually but um, it's important to note that like not every session has to be this kind of massive pump up for it even though we're in the last four or five weeks now um, you don't need that all the time you know you don't need headphones with really heavy music on you don't need this kind of long day of prep or anything like that. Um, particularly for this kind of training, I find that it's quite fatiguing on the nervous system. So I'm gonna do, depending on what time I get home now, um, I'm gonna do a 3K run, or else maybe 45 minutes, or an hour on the rowing machine, nice and easy, tonight before I go to bed. And yeah, it'll be good. I know I had planned on, on eating before this, but I really didn't. Um, so I'm gonna get some food into me now and see how it goes. Before we finish up, we will be doing the the show and tells again in the training vlogs. I am after breaking my glasses as well, so handyman fits will have to come out again. Uh, just to bring back the show and tell a small bit. A lot of people were asking about the, the old plane that was back in the corner here. Um, a friend of mine found that plane years and years and years ago. And we did our very, very best to try and find the owner of, of said plane. Uh, it was crashed in the middle of nowhere and we really had no idea what to do. It looked like it had been crashed a few times. So maybe we weren't the first people to have found it. Uh, this is it. It's an old petrol looking plane. I really have no details on how this works. I stripped it down and a lot of the parts were kind of kept just in a, a, a bin of oil for a long time so it's definitely on the horizon somewhere that i'll recondition this and, or do something with it um it'd be cool to to get it flying or even just to get the engine ticking over again and maybe put that engine into something else but yeah that's it uh it's been it hasn't even been in this shed for a long time it was in the other shed before we moved to this house many many years ago so that's the story behind this if there's other things in the background, I know people ask about the golf clubs and different kind of things that are here. So once the workshop is a bit tidier and once we've had a bit more time, um, I'll give you a proper look around and hopefully show you some of the projects that are being worked on at the moment and projects hopefully in their more final stages of, of completion. Little cinematic shots. Dum, dum, dum. I'm gonna slow these down and put a lot of speed in them. Oh wait, you'll be doing it. Big session today, there. Yeah, big running session on the track. Equipped running. Uh, the tape. A little bit of KT tape. And um, I actually have a meeting now. But after my meeting, we're going to the track. Gurf is coming with me, and we have a one mile. Time to, what are you poking at? I'm scratching your head. <laughs> uh, so yeah, big track session today. Off we go. See the wizard. Now you might not notice, but you thought a quick part was a thing. This is a quit running. 
We need to go get some kinds of Red Bull. Maybe you need to hold this and take a piss. Whenever Gurf stops loudly pissing and pisses against the side of the bowl, we might be able to start talking. No longer natty. Blood thinning. Yeah. It's uh, Ethparin. Ethparin. Literally, the whole purpose of training yeah. is overreaching. Is overreaching. I'll tell you who else is overreaching. The fucking government. I wouldn't come to Cork for a holiday, like, but it's... I would. Would you? West Cork is one of the most... No, people. no, I'm in Cork City. Oh, Cork City, no. No, you should just come into Cork City and go to the west. And it's the nicest place in the world. Cork City's about doing your business. You know? C30. C30. Oh, yes. That was a sexy car. The only recollection of that car is a breaking down. He is break down. Every single weightlifting competition we go to, that car would break down. Blew the turbo in it. Boost pressure sensor went in it. Uh, turbo rail went in it. I, I know you think it was a good looking car, but, but I didn't think it was a very good looking car, I'm not going to lie to you. Yep, I said it. We don't know. Not a great cinema. Why is not? Just not. It's full of city people. City people are the worst. May as well be a different breed of human. A derogatory term townies would use is boggers, you know? Boggers, yeah. But but townies, from a culture's point of view, is an insult. If I call oh, you a townie, Oh, Jesus, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Townies is a bad If I'm describing somebody to you, and I say, oh, they're a bit of a townie, that's not a good thing. So, so blades, you would think would be some kind of rollerblading store. No, it's a very fancy barber shop. Mm. If you wanted a snazzy haircut like Owens. Not right now, like. Not right now, because you need a haircut again, but it's a very snazzy, uh, I wouldn't get a haircut there now. Like, I don't think they'd appreciate me. You, you wouldn't also think like, bay blades, for example, or hull blades, you know those things? Yes. Pieces, fibers? The spinning tops. Not them either. No, no. Just the regular old barbers. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, somebody wants to die. Some nice cultural graffiti. You can't have nothing with townies. No, they're townies. You can't have a bit of peace with townies. They're always at you. Like if you if you stand still inside in the city, someone will accost you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, waiting man pose. Don't know why it happens, but windy, humid. Twenty degrees, nineteen degrees. The wind is the bit I hate the most. It's very windy around wind here. It's coming like here, which means I'll be running into it on the last. Uh, on the last straight, but that's all good. Looks on, no pair of spooks. The spooks, spikes that you put them on feel like what an athletic shoe should feel like. You know, yeah. tight, rigid. Cheating, mechanical doping I hear. Fast yeah. you can. No. Well, it will be as fast as I can. Is it, is it like a full? Yeah. What are you hoping for? Six minutes. Nice. How yeah. are you feeling? Good. Looking flushed. Taking much rest? Take like another two minutes. So it's four laps of the uh, track, is it? Yeah. Not needed, needed that have it. My mark or your mark? <laughs> One thirty five. Reef 13, pick it up a small bit, I'd say. 454, come on, pick it up. Okay. 
No pain. Lower back. So it's 12 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. This is the last squat session of the week. I've been up for like two hours now and uh, my piss is still brown. <laughs> so my original plan was to do this squat session a small bit earlier because uh, I've some other stuff on today, but uh, still pretty dehydrated after yesterday, so after running and then uh, jujitsu. So I've just been, I've drank like a litre and a half of water now um, with some salt in it. Had some food and uh, still don't feel great, but I'll just get ready for the squat session and go do it. Now I know everyone's very envious of the, the camera setup because clearly we're very professional here at Seeker Strength. So if anyone's wondering how you want to set up a, uh, a camera so you can video your training session, all you need is an old gun safe and then two boxes and then some counters, or no, some tech screws and then some countersunk self-tapping screws and you just slot the phone in between them. Magic. One of the more exciting things today, besides the squatting session, is the new Sika pants. So these are, people who watch the live streams, you might have seen like a, a glimpse of these. These are the second version of our pants now, but a prototype version still. We have a refined issue coming later this week from the manufacturers. So I really like these, it's the same heavy duty material. For those of you who felt the pants last time, you would have felt how, how long lasting and strong the pants are. Uh, this kind of material is much, much stronger than what you'd have in a standard kind of gym pants. Uh, so we obviously the version ones we've had now for over a year uh, and a lot of training in them over that year. And they're doing very, very well. They're, hand, they're handling the volume very well, uh, particularly for someone like Owen, who's training maybe 10 or 12 times a week, you know, with a barbell. And a lot of contact on the quads, he's getting no ripping out. Um, so we're exact same material this time. We made some changes just to refine it a bit, listening to feedback from people and obviously feedback from ourselves. So we've changed the waistband. Uh, we've obviously put the Sika tagline in the waistband. But other things we've done is we put a drawstring in them. So last time we wanted to go with just an elasticated waist, but we felt the elasticated waist plus the drawstring this time would give us a small bit more kind of security. You'll notice small things um, that you might get in other pants, right? So there's no metal eyelets anywhere on the pants. There's no metal on the end of the string. So when you go to tie them and tuck them in as you're training, you're not going to get any kind of like extra rubbing or anything weird like that. Features from the first pants we really liked. We still have the zips on the inside with the reinforced panel on the inside. So when you're putting on your knee sleeves or whatever during training, you're not going to get ripping or anything from pulling the pants up some refining in the, the fit itself, the fit towards the end of the leg. Uh, but yeah, you'll get to see these today and uh, more to come on this.
And as always, Seiko knows when the squat session is over. I don't know how she knows. Because uh, a lot of the time I'd sit down for a break in between like heavier sets. But uh, she seems to know when the hype is over and when it's time to come in and get rubbed. Now, right, Seiko? So the last thing I want to say for the end of this training vlog, uh, obviously thanks for watching, is that me and Owen never want these to be like product placement vlogs or anything along those lines. Uh, we use a lot of other people's equipment, so obviously we use Rogue barbells with some black box plates there, some Rogue plates, some non-brand uh, plates, but also like strength shop belts. These Gymshark pants are really, really good pants. This All Things Gym t-shirt I've had for years, literally since Gregor came over to video with Clarence and Gurf, uh, I got it off him then. Phenomenal product, really, really good. It's been trained in a lot. So we do like to, to shout out other people's equipment. Obviously we do a lot of reviews on other people's gear. So never think that if we're talking about our pants, that we're talking about our pants in a way where me and Owen really want to sell a, a certain way. These, obviously we do, right? We like when these things do well. At the moment, every product launch we've had has sold out fully and people have wanted more stuff afterwards. So it's really not like a product placement thing that we do these training vlogs so you we try and sell things to anyone. Uh, we really, really don't. And if we think there's other programs out there, if we think there's other equipment or other apparel out there, we like to give those things a shout out too.